Hello everyone, and welcome to my fourth and last episode of Paper Mario Month 2014. I saved the worst for last, sadly, and it's time to review what is not only my least favorite Paper Mario game easily, but my least favorite Mario game of all time, Paper Mario Sticker Star. And before you ask, no, I haven't played any of those crappy educational games for the NES and SNES, or that CDI game that has gained such critical acclaim over the years. I hope she made lots of spaghetti! Yeah, that one. However, those had no chance of being good. A sequel to what many considered to be the best game on the GameCube? That's another story. Okay, just let me show you something. The Thousand Door came out three years after the original Paper Mario in 2004. Then, Super Paper Mario came out three years after that game in 2007. So you'd think that Sticker Star would come out in 2010, released for the Wii. Wrong, it came out in 2012, five years after Super Paper Mario. I remember hearing about this game two years before, and I was super excited. I saw the first gameplay photos, and get this, it was originally going to use the same basic gameplay as the first two installments. It was going to be a chain shot partner, an area with a maze of playing cards, etc. It looked promising, to say the least. Then they screwed it all up, and I'm here to tell you how. So, what's the story you ask? Bowser kidnaps Princess Peach. Go save her. I'm not kidding. Other than this monstrosity, every single Mario RPG came up with an all new storyline, full of fresh new characters, amazing new locations, and usually an entirely new villain. Sure, the first Paper Mario did have Bowser as the main villain, but he was incorporated in such a fresh and creative way that it felt entirely different from previous installments. This game feels like new Paper Mario Brothers. They didn't even have the decency to add any new NPCs. They just put in a bunch of nameless toads in this stupid crown sticker thing named Kirsty. Oh, I'll get to her later. I know that in my Super Paper Mario review I said that the story doesn't really matter to me in games like this, but laziness is something I do not tolerate. And this is by far the laziest plot I've ever seen in a Mario game. There's also the five royal stickers you need to collect, but this is just a failed attempt at covering up their unwillingness to come up with something creative. As bad as the story is though, it's like something written by Shakespeare compared to the utterly broken gameplay. Like Super Paper Mario, Sticker Star strays from the RPG style of the first two and instead goes for something new. And fails. I mean, at least Super Paper Mario's gameplay was functional. This... isn't. That's all I can say. Sticker Star goes back to a turn-based battle system, but it just doesn't work. Rather than using normal moves, Mario uses stickers for battling enemies. There are jump stickers and hammer stickers, as well as variations of the two that are either stronger, weaker, or have some other effect. Action commands are back, and admittedly, they're implemented well. However, there isn't much else rather than a few special stickers, and the lack of variety is disappointing. You'll also run out of stickers if you aren't careful, but there are numerous ones scattered throughout the map, and you can buy some at shop by obtaining coins from beating enemies. Which brings me to this game's biggest problem. They removed experience points. Finding enemies is completely useless, and they give you nothing other than coins, which you can use to buy stickers, which you waste on more useless enemies. After you've practiced enough, you can skip every single enemy in the game. In a good RPG, you would fight enemies so that you could get more experience, which you use to make yourself stronger, and thus have an actual chance of beating a mandatory fight. In this game, all of that is gone. The combat is good, but not good enough to keep me from skipping every battle I can. Then there are the bosses. <sighs> These guys are insane. I mean, really. I'm going to show you a quote from a rant I heard regarding the difficulty spikes in this game. You go from fighting Goombas and Koopas to King Kong and Godzilla. The bosses are so much harder than the normal enemies, it's crazy. Unless you use a special sticker, of course. Then they're pushovers. I mean, technically the bosses aren't really that hard, but they are compared to the enemies. Let me put this in perspective for you. The first boss, King Goomba, had 90 HP and 5 attack. A regular Goomba has 5 HP and 2 attack, and the Thousand Door X Knots in Chapter 2 had 4 HP and 3 attack, while Magnus Von Grapple, the chapter boss, had 30 HP and a maximum of 4 attack, although usually only performed attacks that did 2 damage. Also, in Sticker Star, you have 20 HP, and, and since leveling up was removed, you can't make yourself any stronger, traditionally, anyway. So the first boss in the game can kill you in four turns. With a Thousand Door, your HP was usually around 25 if you leveled up enough by the time you fight the boss of Chapter 2, and you have a partner to assist you. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with a challenge, but if you have difficulty spikes as big as this, then you have a flawed game. Also, the bosses are just giant versions of regular enemies. King Goomba, Giant Pokey, Petey Piranha, Gooper Blooper, Mr. Blizzard. At least Super Paper Mario had some imagination. Lazy. Oh, and remember all those great partners you received in the first three games? Those are gone now. It would be too hard to incorporate them into the gameplay. Instead, you just get this annoying sticker lady who just yells at you and explains things. And I thought Starlet was bad. 
lazy. The levels are also very forgettable and very linear. No exploration, just keep walking to the right until you win. Also, these are just generic new Super Mario Bros. landscapes put into the 2.5D form. Grass world, desert world, snow world, jungle world, lazy. However, this game's second biggest flaw is its idea of challenging level design. While the other Mario RPGs aren't exactly hard, they did have some really creative puzzles that really made you stop and think. It never felt cryptic. In fact, Sticker Star was originally going to use stickers as a mechanic for puzzles rather than the battle system. There are no puzzles in this game, just mazes. There is no sense of direction in some of these levels. While the other levels are just go from point A to point B. And trust me, they have made sure to include the worst of both worlds in this game. I keep getting lost, and I pretty much have to go to IGN in order to find out just what the flying fuzzy I'm supposed to do. Flying fuzzy? What? Lazy! The best thing about this game, bar none, is the music. It's really catchy, and there are quite a few songs that stick to you. Get it? STICK WITH YOU! However, I'm very disappointed that they chose to make pretty much every song in the game jazzy, as it doesn't fit some situations in it. Listen to the final boss music, you'll know what I mean. It sounds like a goofy, quirky mess, especially for what's supposed to be a climax. You've come all this way, explored all these lands, fought all these bosses, and it's time for your journey to come to a conclusion. Now listen to Paper Mario 2's final boss theme. I mean, it just doesn't compare. I'm fine if your soundtrack has a recurring theme, but if it doesn't work, try something else. Lazy. Now, I'm going to admit something to you. I have not played this entire game. I rage quit after chapter, I'm sorry, World 3, as I realized it was a waste of my time. I know it's unfair to judge a game until you've finished it, but from what I've heard, the quality of the game stays the same for your entire playthrough. If anything, people have said it gets worse from the start of the third chapter and onwards. Anyways, the so-called prologue begins with Mario having to find all the toads in Toad Town so that you can progress through the first chapter. CHAPTER NOT WORLD! Get it right, you ignorant buffoon who have no idea how to make a proper sequel to one of the best games ever, okay I'll stop. This task is the only real part of the prologue other than a run-in with a few Goombas. And it's lame. Really lame. Lazy. The first chapter is really easy, just go to the right and skip all the enemies. Chapter 2 is like that at first, until you reach this annoying maze thing that just made me stop playing this atrocity for a long time. You'd think that intelligent systems would at least have the decency to include a little fan service, but no. Now don't get me wrong, it would still be a terrible, terrible game, but at least I can say I felt a bit of nostalgia. I can count like two references to the other games in the series. Are you kidding me? The Thousand Door is jam-packed with references to the original, and there had only been one game before it, and Super Mario Mario had even more. Despite the nice visuals, witty dialogue, and catchy music, Paper Mario 4's broken gameplay and overall lack of heart prevents it from earning a score above a 3.7 out of 10. I have no idea how this terrible game came to be. I mean, every long-running successful gaming company produces the occasional dud. It's inevitable. But this... this isn't just a small mistake. This is nuts and bolts level bad. This is a mark on the otherwise solid track record of what used to be my favorite game series of all time, even above Kirby and Zelda. It's gonna take a miracle to make the fans forget this. It's not like Intelligent Systems is losing their touch or anything. Check out Fire Emblem Awakening. I haven't played too much of it, but it's a great game. Certainly better than this disaster. So either they just don't care about Paper Mario anymore and don't want to put any effort into it, or Nintendo is trolling us. But come on, it can't be Nintendo's fault. I mean, Nintendo never makes mistakes.
For those of you who haven't seen my reviews of the other three games, let me show you where I'm coming from. The original Paper Mario is a classic, no question about it, and completely changed the Mario RPG series for the better. Paper Mario 2 surpassed it in pretty much every way, and is still the best game I've ever played, even above Shadow of the Colossus and Ocarina of Time. Super Paper Mario was a disappointment, but it was still a really good game, just in a different way. We have been waiting for 8 years for a true successor to Paper Mario 2, and this is what they give us. A broken, lazy, unoriginal, unimaginative, bland, soulless excuse for an RPG. <sighs> you know, some people like this game. If you do, that's fine, I can see why. But the majority of the fanbase doesn't, including myself. And Nintendo needs to acknowledge this. All I can say is that thank god this was on a handheld. This means that we can still get another game for the Wii U rather than having to wait for the next generation. Heck, there's been talk of Intelligent Systems working on an unannounced project for the Wii U, and we just got a new Fire Emblem last year. Perhaps I'll have another game to review for 2015's Paper Mario Marathon. Hopefully this one will be positive. So I guess that does it for this year's marathon. Thanks for watching, remember to subscribe for more reviews, countdowns, and let's plays. Also, feel free to share your opinion by posting a comment below, sharing your thoughts on this game or maybe some criticism. CONSTRUCTIVE CRITICISM! Anyways, next time I'll be counting my top 10 favorite Wii games of all time. See you there.